AI at Mercari. The Trust and Safety TNS team focuses on building moderation systems which are used by customer service, CS, for safeguarding our marketplace. Our team is a feature-oriented team working on back-end, front-end, machine learning technologies to build efficient moderation systems. Mercari has many marketplace policies which users should adhere to when using the app. We are making various efforts in providing customers a safe and secure marketplace. For example, we have rule-based detection systems in place to catch possible violations. But these rule-based approaches can only catch trivial violations and can easily be manipulated by attackers. So to solve this issue, Mercari uses machine learning models which can catch novel violations and make our marketplace safer. If any candidate infringements are identified, we would make sure that customers won't see these kinds of items until they are verified. We will describe this flow more clearly in the next section. Mercari has separate models for each type of possible policy that needs to be monitored. Currently, about 20 machine learning models are running in production, which process millions of requests a day. We frame this problem of catching infringing listings as a classification problem, i.e., whether a listing violates a particular policy. More specifically, we frame it as a binary classification problem and have individual models for each possible policy that requires monitoring. This is because, in our experience, multi-class classification has many bottlenecks for maintenance, and its performance is lower compared to its binary counterparts. We use both machine learning, gradient boosting, and deep learning, multimodal natural language processing models in our team. Listing data sent by users are processed through our machine learning system, and those that are judged as being suspicious are flagged and sent to the CS operators. If a CS operator finds a listing to be violating our terms, it will be removed from the marketplace. The seller will then be notified. CS operators are an integral part of our detection flow to ensure that items are not mistakenly flagged or removed from the marketplace by mistake. Unfortunately, mistakes will happen for systems that have not seen extensive use in production environments. The involvement of the CS operators in the flow is also a big help in improving the performance of the ML models, as the operator's review results are stored as annotations on top of the existing data that can be used to retrain and adjust these policies. Data is the key for any machine learning application. We need to have quality data for any ML model to actually work. There are certain challenges to collecting good quality data. First, there are many policies we need to keep track of. We need to consider many different use cases and come up with criteria that are good for each of the policies that we maintain. The other problem is that CS operators have templates, or a manual, to know which listings to flag. The problem is that these templates are always evolving to tackle various new trends in the listings that are submitted to us. For example, before the pandemic, nobody really thought about banning masks, but CS needed to quickly adjust their templates to ban them because they were either defective or too expensive. These templates may be removed once regulations or trends change. These changes may cause quality issues from a machine learning point of view and might dramatically affect the model performance. To tackle these issues, we had to coordinate very closely with CS operators and come up with standardized templates for each policy. After some iterations, our data quality improved drastically along with model performances. There are still some inconsistencies in our data sets, which we hope to address going forward. 
As described in previous sections, we frame our problem as a binary classification task. So we have a separate model for each policy we want to monitor. Currently, we have about 20 models running in production. Having tens of different models may sound like a hassle, but there is a reason. The reason Mercari does not use a single model to work with all possible policies is because models that tackle multiple issues or multi-class models are hard to maintain. If a model contains logic for multiple domains or classes, it means that by adding, deleting, or updating any one of these classes will impact the model's performance in unintended ways. For example, if we wanted to improve the performance of a given class, it would most likely affect others. It would be a disaster if we tweaked parameters for a class and accidentally let all illegal items pass through unnoticed. Instead, we separated the models into smaller policies that focus on specific classes of problems. Model architectures in most of our policies use gradient boosting via light GBM classification model, as gradient boosting models are very good for tabular data that we use. For hyperparameters, we use Optuna hyperparameter tuning. Some of Mercari's policies use deep learning. We have experimented with text-based DL models, image-based DL models, multimodal models, among others. But our experiments showed that for our text-based neural network, using LSTM architecture beat other models. Generally, there will be two types of metrics to optimize for in machine learning application. One is business metrics, and the other is ML model metrics. Generally, we would want to optimize the model metrics as well as improve the business metrics in parallel. But sometimes it's difficult to directly translate business metrics into ML model workflow. Sometimes we may achieve this partially, but this requires more tuning to maximize output. In our case, the model metrics consist of precision and recall. Precision is the number of items that are flagged by CS operators, divided by the total number of alerts sent to them. Recall is when the number of items that are flagged by CS operators are divided by the number of items that actually should be flagged. Between the two, recall can only be measured offline, since there is no way to know the real total number of items that should be flagged in the real marketplace. For business metrics, we consider the same metrics as the model metrics. On top of that, we consider the number of reports from customers who report an item violating a marketplace. Normally, we would go through offline evaluations, and then do a full A-B testing for any online evaluations against new models that we release. But for our case, we would be depending on the number of reports from customers, which tends to be very low. This would mean that we must wait several months to release new models, and that is not feasible. For now, when we release new models, we let 50% of the data go through the new model and the rest through the old models. We then compare them to see if there are any differences. Monitoring performance is a very crucial step in the machine learning model lifecycle. This is because of the concept drift problem. The performance of ML models degrades over time due to changes in data distributions of input on data it's trained on. This makes retraining the model periodically a necessary step to maintain production performance. In our team, we use Looker dashboards for monitoring. We have a separate dashboard for each of the policies. Apart from this, we also have a Slack bot running every day which sends a performance report of the previous day to our Slack channels. This architecture has a basic flaw in it. If any of the models experiences downtime, elevated latencies, there is a possibility for the breakdown of the entire system. 
This is because the proxy acknowledges a message only if all models respond. A basic solution for this is to have circuit breakers, or server concurrent requests, limits that will avoid downtime due to high load. But this results in increased latencies to receive new messages. We have solved this problem by using internal message queues. Currently, we use Google Cloud PubSub to queue data to be processed. This data is then sent through gRPC to be validated if it's okay to be listed. This architecture means that the validation must be done asynchronously from when the customer submits a new item to be listed. Ideally, we should validate listings immediately when a customer submits a new item. But currently, this is difficult to achieve without causing user experience issues, considering the latency of machine learning models. We are hoping to make this even better for the customers by performing the validation at the edge on the customer's devices. While we still have a long way to go, Mercari's violation detection has significant reduction in operational costs, incorporating the machine learning models into the detection workflow. The models help make the market a safer place for our customers and let the operators focus their efforts on emerging trends. The AI team at Mercari is always striving to make customer experience better through the use of AI. If you are interested in these kinds of projects, please don't hesitate to contact us from the link in the description.